This tutorial is on the Solar Motion Demonstrator Lab. <clears throat> um, you're going to receive a blue circular piece of paper with uh, latitude and month on it, and it's going to have perforations in it. And in those perforations, you'll be able to move pieces of paper around. In the instructions, it explains, and it's pretty clear as to what two pieces are glued. Um, in addition to this, you're also going to receive a green um, horizon disc, and you're also going to receive a little brass pin that's going to be used to move along the months of the year <clears throat> to represent the sun at different um, elevations or solar angles in the sky. Um, and that's going to depend on what latitude you choose um, when you move the horizon disk. When you're done putting everything together, you should end up with something that kind of looks like this. Um, it's going to have the green horizon disk, which is glued on one of those tabs. Nowhere else, just that one tab. And this allows you a lot of movement in the horizon disk so that you can take it and there should be a notch and move that horizon disk along the different latitudinal lines, uh, the increments that are there. The brass pin is going to be slid over the, um, the months, but it's also going to be um, sort of bent, kind of crimped and bent so that it moves not too loosely, but also not very tight where you can't move it and it ruins the paper. Um, the horizon disk, uh, in intuitively you want to look at the item like this, but this uh, solar motion demonstrator actually requires you to use the horizon disk as if it were flat. So you always want to keep the horizon disk parallel to the ground. And that's supposed to represent a dot which would represent you standing on the horizon at a particular location depending on your latitude and then where the sun would be depending on the month throughout the course of the year. You're also going to be using a protractor for some of the questions and when you use the protractor the best thing to do is to take your horizon disk and disconnect it from the blue circle so that everything lies flat. And this allows you to take your protractor and place the center uh, dot of your protractor right on top of your horizon disk. And then using the uh, bottom line of your protractor, line that up to whatever latitude you're going to use. And in doing that, let's see, we'll click this out and in doing that you'll be able to gauge um, the elevation of the sun at different latitudes so anywhere they want you to use the protractor it's best to be used in this way another tip I can give you is that when you're making um, the horizon disk and gluing it onto the motion uh, demonstrator it would be very helpful and you'll notice that mine is not quite you'll notice that my increments on my horizon disk don't quite match up very well with the increments that I have on the latitude and that's because I didn't take the time to place my horizon disk and glue it perfectly quite honestly I wasn't sure how to put this together until I uh, ran through it a few times but if you do that it'll make using the protractor a little bit easier because all of the increments will just line up. If they don't, it gets too busy and that makes it harder for you to go through um, the lab. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through some parts of the lab. Uh, it's out of 36 points, so this is something that I probably will collect or will go over in class. Um, I'm not quite sure about that. Um, your task is not to uh, do this lab as if it were a formal lab report because you're not really hypothesizing. You're basically using the solar motion demonstrator model to um, reinforce what you learned from the last two presentations on chapter four about um, the Earth's rotation and how its tilt of its axis um, contributes to the change in the angle of the sun 
and what the seasons presented about the summer solstice and the equinox, perihelion, aphelion, the distance that the planet is from the sun, how that contrasts the seasons in the northern hemisphere with those seasons in the southern hemisphere. There's a few pre-lab questions. Those pre-lab questions um, ask you to take a look at the motion demonstrator, use some of the information from the background. You may have to access a globe or an atlas. You're more than welcome to use your um, cell phones to access different um, latitudes to try to find some information. The experimental design, again, you're not doing a procedure in any way. You're just trying to use the demonstrator to answer some questions. Um, there are some tips for using the motion demonstrator. I try to highlight in green. Uh, this will probably not be in green on the paper that you have because it's a black and white copy. Um, there's many demarcations on here. There are demarcations that are actually on the horizon disk um, can be used to uh, gauge the rising and setting of the sun. So if you were to take your horizon disk and place it at a particular latitude and you were to move the sun, you'll notice that there's this swing arm that's been created. Well, that swing arm, let's actually put it to the correct latitude for us, which is around 41 degrees latitude. Um, that swing arm represents the amount of time that the sun is in the daytime and also how much of it is in the day, um, nighttime. So although you can't quite gauge the exact number of hours, you should be able to estimate I'm actually not using it correctly. There we go. Um, you should be able to estimate the number of hours that the sun is visible. You also should be able to use these lines on here to kind of gauge where the sun is rising and setting. Remember, it's going to rise in the east and set in the west. You'll notice that I also have a little um, black dot that I put on the sun. That made it really easy for me. So when I was looking at my horizon, I could see where the black dot was actually coming um, over the east and setting in the west. And that made it very easy for me to line up the dot with the little increments that were on my horizon disk. So when you're asked to gauge what um, latitude the sun rose in the east, you would then take your arm, swing it from the east to the west, and looking Man, this is from your direction, so this would actually be west for me. But looking at it like this, I'd be able to see where that dot just meets the horizon, and then look above to see what increment that was. And they are in increments of 10. Um, you certainly can gauge halfway be between 10 if you want. Uh, let's see, something else, the swinging month, latitude. There are some visual instructions here that kind of give you a picture of what I'm going through, but I think this little tutorial will be very helpful for you. Um, when it says due east or due west, those are what we refer to as rising in the east or setting in the west. Due east would be exactly east. In other words, it would be right at east, not any degrees north or any degrees south of that um, line. Um, again, in this part of the exercise, you're going to have to determine the latitudes using an atlas or a globe or um, your uh, cell phone, and then you will find the sunrise and sunset. The term sol solar zenith actually means when the sun is directly overhead. This would be rising in the east, setting in the west. The angle of the sun is this angle that's being created that can be gauged from a protractor, so remember that. But directly overhead is when the sun is directly overhead. Imagine if you were standing here looking straight up at the sun. That would be referred to as the solar zenith angle, or directly overhead. I can't think of anything else that is major um, important that would prevent you from completing the lab. But I think what I've covered will help uh, help you in building the structure and also having a little bit better understanding of how you're using it to complete the activity.